Good day, everyone. Classes are suspended, but it doesn't mean that we cannot continue learning even if we are at home. So, let us review our previous lesson about formal logic. Let us try to construct the truth table of the following compound statement. Pause the video for a while, solve the problem, and then see if you have created the correct truth table. Did you get it right? Very good. Let us now proceed to the next lesson. Our next topic is about sets. So what are sets? Sets are an ordered collection of objects or a collection of elements. The keyword here is an order. So the sequence doesn't matter as long as the elements are part of our collection. Set theory was created by a German mathematician born in Russia named George Ferdinand Ludwig Philipp Cantor. And that is his picture. Examples of sets are mango, apple, grape, or orange. Also, 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. Objects in a set are also called elements or members of the set. A set is said to contain its elements. These are different methods of describing contents of a set. Two sets are equal if and only if they have the same elements. Looking at the first statement, you will notice that the first set and the second set doesn't have the same order of elements. But as long as we have the same elements, we can consider that the two sets are equal. In the second statement, you will notice that there are repetition of elements in the first set. While in the second set, we do not have repetition. But again, they are equal since they have the same elements. We also have what we call the set builder notation. Set builder notation is another method of describing the contents or elements of a set without enumerating the elements and by using categories or characteristics of the elements of the set. It is easier for us to understand set theory if we use graphical representation called Venn diagram. Venn diagram was developed by John Venn. It is a method of using diagrams to illustrate set theory. The universal set U contains all objects under consideration. Venn diagrams are represented using a rectangle. Inside the rectangle, circle or other geometric figures are used to represent sets. Sometimes, points are used to represent the particular elements of the set. It's often used to indicate their relationships between sets. Let us now try to draw a Venn diagram that represents V, set of vowels in the English alphabet. So to do this, we have a rectangle, then inside that we have a circle which has the elements A, E, I, O, and U, which represents V, our set. And outside the circle, we have all the other letters of the English alphabet. Another notation to describe membership in sets is by writing element of and not an element of. Set with no elements is called the empty set or null set denoted by these two symbols. Singleton set contains just one member. The set A is a subset of B if and only if every element of A is also an element of B. Let us look at the following. A is a subset of B. B is a superset of A. Also, we can say that A is a proper or strict subset of B since A is smaller compared to B. B is a proper or strict superset of A since B is larger than set A.
Let S be a set. If there are exactly n distinct elements in S, where n is a non-negative integer, we say that S is a finite set and n is the cardinality of S. The cardinality of a set is a measure of the number of elements of the set. The cardinality of S is denoted by this symbol. A set is said to be infinite if it is not finite. Infinite sets may be countable or uncountable. Next meeting, we will be discussing the different types of operators under sets such as union, intersection, complement, difference, symmetric difference. So I'll see you next Monday. That's it. Please don't forget to hit the like button, share this video, click subscribe, and turn on the notification bell so you won't miss any new upload. Till next time and see you soon.